Hey y'all, this is Bill Hewitt. Hey, I'm uh, Mike. Powerstrokehelp.com. Where's your hat at, Mike? Come on, oh, man. It's not that cold today. Oh, come on, Mike. We got to we got you got to show your hat. You got to roll the hood. You know what I'm saying? Got to have a little Power Stroke Help going. Come on, Mike. Yeah, but you got it on your shirt, so we're good. Look, we're going to talk about uh, charge air cooler problems, which is sometimes known as the turbo boot, sometimes it's known as the intercooler boots, okay, on, on power strokes. It's these things. What we're really going to talk about here is these damn charge air cooler boots. It's called a charge air cooler or CAC boot is the actual word that you would use if you called uh, parts uh, at, at Ford. Um, and these things will will pop off at the absolute worst time when you're going down the road. And, you know, you're running, making 10, 12 pounds of boost, diesel's just singing, and all of a sudden, Pah! and the thing will just fall right on its face. Diesels need boost. In other words, you've got to have air molecules to mix with the diesel fuel molecules in your combustion chamber or diesels simply don't make a hell of a lot of power. Uh, normally aspirated uh, diesels just are total dogs. You know, like the old IDI uh, diesels, uh, and they even turbocharged them towards the end before the, the 7.3 power stroke came out. But, but so you, you, you take the boost away from a diesel and it's a total turd. I mean, there's nothing there and they get terrible fuel economy. So it, it's really important uh, um, that these are maintained and dealt with or they will cause you a problem on the side of the road. It's just that simple. Early diesels were not intercooled, okay? They were smoky and they were noisy and, and clattery and whatnot. And somebody figured out, uh, probably somebody German figured out that if you add a turbocharger, okay, it, it will get more power. But turbochargers add heat to the charge, the air charge coming in through your, your air filter. When it goes through a turbocharger, it gets hot. So the early 7.3s, uh, what they call the old body style 7.3 trucks, the square body ones, up until 1997, were non-intercooled. You could buy a kit for them. It was marginally effective. The turbos were tiny. The, the injectors didn't flow enough fuel to really make it worth your while. So then when they went to uh, the second generation 7.3s, the new body style, uh, they they intercooled them, okay? And and that intercooling is all basically the same. Uh, the, the idea of it is, you know, the air comes out of the turbo because when it comes in, it comes at an ambient temperature. It gets heated up. Anytime you compress the air, it heats it, okay? So what they found is the cooler air makes more power. The denser, cooler air makes more power. And so it's very important that air charge, the compressed air charge at this point, is cooled. So it goes through this tube, right here, CAC tube, hot. Hot, the hot side of the CAC tube. And it goes this big intercooler out here, okay, way out here. And it goes around the other side, the air travels through this thing, okay, right? Comes out way down underneath the air cleaner, way down there, and pops up right here and goes into the intake of the engine. One of the things that's a note, and there's a constant debate about this, is that on your air intake, uh, it actually runs under a vacuum, and underneath uh, this intake is a breather where it, it helps ventilate the crankcase. This is very important that this stays intact. The reason being is these later model high RPM en engines really have to have the in, uh, crankcase evacuated uh, to, to, to function correctly. Or otherwise, it will pressurize and cause seal failures in your turbo and oil leaks on your engine. Yeah, the people out there who are deleting the crankcase ventilation system on anything newer than 2003 is screwing up big time. There's big debate about it, but we've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And it works, the engine works as it was designed by Ford that they spent millions and millions of dollars developing. Trust the engineering, okay? So as a result, you'll get some, you get some oil. And this is part of the problem. At this point, because of this ventilation system, this suction, you do get some oil. It's a very minimal amount of oil. You'll, you'll never see it move on your dipstick, but it gets sucked through the turbo and then put into this charge air cooler. And it'll actually accumulate some down in the bottom of the intercooler. So the point of failure for a lot of these, as you can see in this one, is that oil build up and the oil breaks down the rubber and it swells it and uh, causes it not to hold on as well. Typically, the uh, intercooler right here, these intercooler boots, charge air cooler boots, fail on a, uh, on a six liter right here at this corner because there's pressure built up at this corner and it, and it accumulates back here and this thing will pop off 
some of the guys running really, really high boost uh, trucks, uh, you'll see uh, dents in the hood, okay, where the thing has come off so violently that it will actually dent the hood up. Now, this particular one doesn't have it because this is a, a nice, reasonable human being who drive this truck who don't have industrial diesel injection tuning on their truck, all right? So you start running big injectors, big turbo, that will exacerbate the problem and make it even worse. So most of the failures I see are on the hot side because, because of the heat. And as he just said, this boot breaks down. Um, this has become a very emotional, sore subject, these turbo boots. So part of what we're doing today is we're gonna try to tell you how to do things right. Um, the first thing that I'm really disgusted is the aftermarket world on this subject. Let's go take a look at your pile, Mikey. Let's go see the dog poop pile, Mikey. Show me what doesn't work. This kind of stuff is not what you do. Okay. This but they'll show fail. pretty, Mike. Look at the pretty candy apple red uh, anodizing on them. That's it's just right. so nice. So, so what's the problem with these, Mike? Is the what, what's the breakdown? Well, it's not a factory. The boots aren't factory. There's no indentations to lock, help lock this boot in place. This is a factory boot. This is aftermarket boot. And see that, see that groove, that, that that groove right there. Well, that slides into a groove right here on the uh, on the uh, pipe. Yeah. And so if you put a smooth one in there, like this aftermarket, there's less grip. It's going to pop off. Right. This is the intercooler side, and it, it has what it needs to hold on to this. Right. But the big deal Well, there's is a big the lip grip. on the intercooler itself that grabs that. Correct. But these tubes are blowing off because people are not installing them correctly, and they're not putting Ford parts on these trucks. Right. And in the end, I'm the last guy that touched it. It's all my fault that you went and bought this Taiwan kit. Right, right. And so what I want to emphasize here is... There's nothing wrong with your Ford tubes. You need to stick with the co the cold air system that's on it, and you need to buy the Ford boots. And I, I'm going to show you that little thing we're talking about here a little bit better here. So this is the turbo side, and I've got some part numbers in case you need that. But I've got one side that's designed with a indentation lip in here that needs to go onto the turbo compressor and it grabs that very well. Okay. You're not going to find that on your aftermarket stuff. Right. And then of course this rib we're talking about right here. So this, this indentation needs to go with that groove. With that groove. That that so it pops on there and st and, and pops on there and stays on there. It gives it some Yeah, look at that. It just pops right on there. That's nice, Mike. So that's where it's supposed to land. Right. When you put your clamp around there, that is not going to come off. Right. Most people, what I see is they're doing this. Mm -hmm. They're pushing it all the way back. Uh huh. And they're pushing it past where it should go. Correct. So the now, other thing that's really important to talk about here is that if you if you put even if you put a new part or even a an old greasy part, okay, like this, onto a greasy tube. You know, last time I checked, the oil is a lubricant, and it is going to go and pop right off here. So it's real important when you, you install this. So, so, so you use some brake cleaner. It's real important you use some brake cleaner and a, and a good shop towel and get this just dry, 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 dry. Okay? Dry, 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 dry. Both surfaces. Also, when you blow a tube off, it's done. You need to put a new one on. It's done. I mean a uh, boot. Okay. Because you have strained, you have stressed that. So it's we're no longer friends. At that point, it's it's once it's once this piece, once this piece is stretched and given up, we're no longer friends. Is that what you're saying, Mike? That's what I'm saying. These parts are not forever parts. Okay, and they do get impregnated with oil. The, uh, it's in a pressurized, heated oil atmosphere, so the rubber does break down. Um, and so you will you will have failure on these. The most common one being right here at the turbo. That's where all the heat is. Right, right, heat and pressure. And the first thing you're going to start to see is this thing will start sweating. Yes. All right. So that's so, normal during its life. That's yeah, you'll see the oil actually come through through this. You'll actually see little pores um, where it comes through. And that's an indicator when they people bring me a truck that has a lot of oil, uh, especially coming out of here, that they're running a lot of boost. 
a lot of boost and they're running their they're running their truck hot and uh, you know it's just it's just getting run so we got two different versions of this this is a this is the shorter elbow we call it it's for the 03 okay early model early model that's gonna be the part number for that with okay a, with a that's the early model ending C letter and then uh, and then this, and then is, this the, is the most common this 04 is the most common 04 to 04 to 07 okay yeah. and uh, it's a little bit longer isn't it e either one of these will work but this is really designed for the later truck mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a little bit longer we but more and most importantly is to make sure that you put install it correctly don't put the groove side towards the turbo the groove side goes towards the tube okay it's really important that you install it correctly I mean we I can't tell you how many of these we've seen be put on backwards and people complaining about it no I don't know what happened well you didn't know what you're doing that's the problem loosen up that's behind right. the wrench and the clamp needs to fall I mean this is very self-explanatory engine side <laughs> do not over torque it do not under torque it clamp needs to fall within this band range right okay you're not going to find this stuff on the aftermarket boots. Right. And then, again, if it's not put on right, you get one chance to really get this right. Because if it blows off you, with that clamp on there, you have you have stressed the material. Okay, so I've seen some, you know, you'd say you don't like the aftermarket boots. Okay, Mike, I understand that. But I've seen some thicker neoprene ones. I mean, does that thicker neoprene ones work better? Or or, or, or do they are they equal to the Ford? Or what, which, what do you see with those? I'm telling you, we've tried all kinds of different boots. And this is the only thing that holds up. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of those aftermarket ones, it seems like if you get it right the first time, it's okay. But if you have to remove it. Oh, yeah. Once it comes off and on once or twice, it, they're done. Yeah. And they're not cheap so, either. I mean. I mean, this, this, I know these are upwards of $110, $120. Um, and, you know, if you're going on a long trip, it may be worth it to have one with you. Do you, you think that's a good idea, Mike? I do think it's a good idea, especially mm -hmm. this hot side, to, this turbo one. Hot okay, so, I mean, I think it's safe to say that if you're driving the truck around every day and you're just using it as a commuter vehicle and, and, just, and you're not really boosting it and heating it up, then these things will last a very long time, won't they? They will. Okay. But if you're going cross-country and you're pulling a trailer and you got a bunch of screaming kids in the back seat and all the rest of that, it's probably a good idea to either change this before you go or or uh, or inspect it to see how much oil is in it uh, because I'm telling you, this thing's going to pop off in the middle of the night with the rain going sideways and your truck is going to lose all ass. There will be no more no more power. It will just absolutely fall on its face and, and people freak out like, oh, I blew it up because now it's smoking. It's like, no, it's delivering fuel but not enough air molecules so you're you're you know you've created a, a much bigger problem so you carry one of these these at least this upper one with you buy the boot buy the clamps brand yeah. new buy the clamps Use brand new because the clamp. clamps do stretch they absolutely do stretch they all right so be. this First the number for the clamp oh, okay look at that that's a double a for the turbo side okay and then here's the one for the intercooler side, and that can be used on the cold side, either right. side of this right. intercooler. Um, a lot of these setups here that you see have been, um, they use a plastic cold side tube, okay. and that was just cheaper in manufacturing. Uh, you, you can still get that, that metal tube. Yeah, the, the, the metal tube, at the yeah, like the 05s and 6s and 7s, you see that plastic, plastic one. one well and the bellows there's a little bellows that sits down underneath here it likes to to get holes in it all the time yes and you'll lose boost and power and yeah yep they'll start leaking you'll see oil accumulation around this air bottom of this air filter you need to be looking at the pleats in that in that and those things expansion are expansion joint cause those things are expensive they're a couple hundred bucks uh i think it's about eighty dollars oh really a plastic tube 80 bucks for a plastic one okay um, so so if you had a choice between the metal one with the, with the two blue rubber ends on it and a plastic one, which one would you I choose? I would get the metal one. Okay. That may come down to availability. Right. You know, which one can you get, actually get? So. There's some there's some guy on eBay selling this, I'm this telling you. This 4C3Z04 style, um, it comes actually, it currently comes with both boots. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't always get that, so sometimes I have to go back to the plastic. All right, so this is in the, in the in a perfect world where we're actually paying attention and the stars line up and the planets are good and all the rest of that. Now, when you're stuck on the side of the road, the rules change. 
Okay, you gotta you gotta straighten some shit out. You gotta do it now. This is where Rave hairspray. There's different versions of this stuff. Aquanet Rave. This is the the latest. It's always on the bottom shelf. It used to be cheap. It's not as cheap as it was. You always want to make sure it's flammable. The flammable stuff is what you want. You know, you know. Grandma back in the day when she's making big hair, you know what I'm saying, and she's smoking her cigarette, it, it, it could be a problem, you know. She'd be spraying it. <laughs> and whoosh! Grandma, what happened to your hair? Well, she, Grandma's smoking, spraying that spray again. You want to make sure that you have your brake cleaner, and if you have to go to Dollar Tree or someplace like that, it's where you can find this. CVS has it. Uh, you know, some of the grocery stores don't have the ex extent of this type of, of hair treatment, okay? But it's extra strong hold, you know, it, it's, uh, it's humidity resistant. This stuff is like plastic on your hair. But you, what you want to do, and it's an old, really it goes back to an old bicycle grip trick, you know, BMX bikes and that sort of thing. If you spray this on your bicycle grips, get it real clean with that, and then slide the grips on before it dries. Those grips will never come, you have to cut them off the handlebars, okay? Motorcycles, old motocross bikes, that's how we did it. It works great on an older boot because this you're probably not going to have this when this one goes bad and it's stretched out. And you're trying to do the best you can to save your ass on the side of the road. Now, you know, back when I drove a 6'4 truck, I had I had a, a roadside intervention with that thing in Opelika, Alabama. I'll never forget it. Everything was closed and this tube down on this side on the bottom, uh, I used all the hairspray and used the rest of that, but I had a pretty strong tune in it. So it was making 20 pounds of boost just going down the road. It was it was pretty pretty badass truck well this boot down here got me and I was stuck I mean I'm a long way from everywhere and I ended up having to wire you know use uh, use like bailing wire to hold it on there okay to you know to hold it onto the the uh, onto the intercooler one other little roadside trick uh, that I have recently seen that I got a chuckle out of somebody had a screw gun and so look this son of a bitch is gonna stay on here and look at there, they put it down, they put a screw right in that thing. I would like to have used a little smaller screw, but by God, it, it stayed on there. And look, he had Gorilla Glue, and he had every kind of damn glue he could find. I mean, because you're stuck somewhere. you got to do something about it, you know. And that's, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, that's the real damn world out there. I got a boot that's just deteriorating. Yeah, the boot's gone bad. They stretch a little bit. They get the oil in them. And then, and then and bad things this start to happen. This is not on here right. See, this is a perfect example of that that tube has been forced too far on there. Okay. I mean, this boot. And right. so, yeah, I know it is not in the groove. You can kind of see how it's all puffed out. Right. Um, so that's why this wasn't staying on. <laughs> also, your tuning. You can overboost this truck and have all kinds of problems. Well, I mean, what do you think is maximum boost on one of these engines? What's stock maximum boost? What, 25 they, they or 30? About 25. Yeah. But this side of 30. Right, right. Want to stay on this side of 30 with your boost. Or you'll blow the intercooler up, you'll blow your tubes off, you'll, you'll have a lot of problems. Let's talk about one other thing. Okay. This right here is a stock air filter. All right. Oh, Mikey's going to rant about the air filters. Let's go. Come on, Mikey. It's a very well-designed filter. It's got plenty of media to move air without a restriction. It comes through the front like it should. It catches cold air. It's very well-designed, and it's very expensive to replace. This when you go and do this. Correctly. Yeah. This is what I call what we've named over the years here to be a hot air intake. Oh yeah, hot air intake. So this, these people expect you to put a filter right here. This is cleanable. One of them K&M jobs. And all it's doing is breathing hot air from around this fan and off this radiator at idle. Mm -hmm. uh, that can even set some codes for the intake air temp. This is a bad idea. But Mike, it's so pretty. Uh, this was very well designed. Well, the Donaldson filter media was developed in the first Gulf War in tanks, and so, uh, and all the all the gear that they had out there running in the middle of the sandstorm, you know, out there in the sandbox, that's what this is designed for. This is a military spec filter. Don't mess with something that works. You know, uh, you're you're going to be pressing the limitations of all the systems. And I know everybody wants to go a little faster and go go a little more, but you know what? Most of the factory parts on this engine are outstanding and have a very long life and are very reliable and uh, very long service life and very reliable. And so why mess with something that ain't broke, you know? I mean, I understand it's a pretty red tube and all, but, you know, at the end of the day, is that really going to end up 
lasting any length of time. What were you saying? They just don't, they really don't fit right. Yeah. So, um, we've had to go back and put a lot of these on. And just leave stuff alone, people. Just leave it alone. This truck is stock, other than this radiator we put on it. And, yeah. You know, well, the O-ring heads, uh, I mean, O-ring heads, heads studs. ARP studs, and, uh, and factory injectors, and, and we put a little tuning in it. Um, not yeah. major tuning, but it increases throttle response, and it, uh, and it makes the truck a little more efficient, but we don't go crazy. You know, we, we've, this tuning is, is especially tested to, to give optimum performance without straining any of the factory parts. And I think that we've, you know, after, you know, thousands and thousands of these trucks done out there, I think we've managed to say that we've licked this problem. Well, we're here to help you any way we can. Bring your truck to us. We'll be happy to lifetime dealer proof it for you or do whatever it needs. Uh, thank you for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop on the internet for the PowerStroke owner and enthusiast. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you. Nice day finally, huh? Yes. Wind quit blowing, you know? I thought I had to take my jacket off. These guys down here just came down from Ohio were walking around in shorts like it was summer. Yeah. Like, God, this is really nice. Yeah, go back home to the snow, you know? There's already enough people in Atlanta.